Now let's try to understand how we can explain the difference between uh, between the yields on different bonds. So in the example I just gave, we had a 10 year corporate bond with a yield of 3% and we had a similar maturity treasury bond with a yield of 2.5%. So there is a difference here or our absolute spread was 0.5%. Now the credit spread is the difference between yields of bonds that differ only in credit rating. So let's say that our treasury bond has a perfect triple A credit rating and this corporate bond is like the treasury bond in terms of uh, the fact that it has the same maturity same liquidity let's say that like the treasury bond it's completely option free no prepayment options etc but the only difference is that this corporate bond has a rating of double a b so it has a slightly lower rating and that means that obviously since this has a lower rating there is default risk or there is credit risk and for that credit risk investors are demanding a slightly higher return so here that higher return or spread relative to the treasury is 0.5 percent so if this 0.5 percent is explained purely based on the difference in the credit rating then this 0.5 percent is called a credit spread now in general terms a lot of investors believe that credit spreads narrow during expansions and widen during contractions or recessions the idea here being this during expansions everybody is happy about the economy everybody is confident about the economy so people are seeking higher returns higher yields during uh, expansion there is greater confidence that companies will be able to generate cash and and uh, pay the interest payments and par values on on their bonds and so on so clearly money flows away from treasury towards corporate bonds so when money flows away from treasuries and towards corporate bonds what happens the in this state the price of uh, treasuries since money is leaving treasuries the price of treasuries goes down and the yield goes up whereas for corporate bonds the price goes up and the yield comes down so notice that the yield on treasury if this is a treasury bill the yield on and this is let's say the zero mark so the yield on treasury and this is our, our yield the yield on treasury will always be lower than the yield on corporate bonds and as shown in this example if times are good then the yield on treasuries is going up the yield on corporate bonds is coming down and hence the spread or the difference between our co corporate bonds and treasury bonds is becoming lower so that explains this point that credit spread narrows during expansions and you take the opposite scenario where the where we have some sort of a recession so during a recession this gap widens why because now the opposite is happening so when there is a recession lots of money flows into treasury bills the price goes up and the yield comes down so that is one point that explains why the yield on t bills in the us is currently so low because as you know the economic situation there is not great so then t bills yield comes down since money is leaving the corporate market the yield on corporate bonds goes up so the spread or the difference between the two widens next let's talk about the impact of embedded options on spreads you've seen this before to some extent but when you have options embedded options such as a put option conversion option or exchange option remember all these benefit the investor so an investor likes these options and since an investor likes these options he is willing to pay a higher price for bonds with these options a higher price means a lower yield 
and obviously if the yield is lower then the spread of a bond with one of these options relative to a treasury bond will be low so let's let's take a situation as follows let's say we have a 5 year treasury bond with yield equal to 2% and then you take two corporate bonds a and b let's say a is portable so a has a put option and option and bond b has has uh, no put option and let's say that both a and b have the same amount of credit risk because they are from the same issuer now the point here is as follows that since investors prefer bond a they are willing to live with a lower yield on a so we might have a situation where the yield on a is 2.5% whereas the yield on b is 2.6% the fact that this difference of 0.1% is the difference that is there because of the put option so investors like the put option and so they are willing to live with a one uh, with a 0.1% less yield relative to a bond that is similar in all respects except that it does not have the embedded put option you can use the same logic now for other options that benefit the investor with a call with a call embedded call option the situation is reversed why because the call option benefits the issuer so issuers like call options investors do not like call options so now if you have two bonds c and d and option c bond c has a embedded call option whereas bond d does not then let's say that there is a yield of uh, 3% on the bond which is callable then will the yield on bond d be higher or lower the answer is that the yield on bond d will be lower why because investors don't like the call option and hence to invest in bond c they will demand a slightly higher yield relative to another bond that is similar in all respects except for this call option so i hope that makes sense now another point that uh, i will make over here and this is related to the earlier reading on mortgage backed securities but if you recall from that reading there is an element of prepayment risk when investors invest in mortgage backed securities prepayment risk if you recall is the risk that the homeowners will make payments faster than originally scheduled and essentially the investor gets his principal back faster and hence receives lower interest payments so that risk is called prepayment risk and because of that prepayment risk the yield on mortgage backed securities where investors face this prepayment risk will be relatively high so if you have a mortgage backed security and another security which does not have prepayment risk but is similar in all other regards then the yield and the yield spread on mortgage backed securities will be slightly higher because of this prepayment risk now while we are on the subject of options such as embedded call options and put options and and also a prepayment option is 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 also uh, embedded option so let's understand this concept of option adjusted spread and this will be seen in more detail in a later reading but i'll just uh, give you an idea here because there are some curriculum questions that test this concept fundamentally option adjusted spread is the spread that is in effect once we take away the impact of a option so let's understand this in very simple terms let's say we take a 5 year treasury bill or treasury note with a yield equal to 2% and let's say that you have two bonds issued by issuer xyz you have bond a and bond b and let's say that the yield on bond a is 2.5% and the yield on bond b is 2.6% and the reason the yield on bond b is higher is that bond b is callable 
Now, the let's say that so bond A, so bo all, all these bonds have the same maturity, same liquidity. Clearly, the bonds issued by the company, which are both A and B, have a higher higher yield for two reasons. So this actually this this extra yield of 0.5 percent is explained purely based on the extra credit risk because we are assuming here that there is uh, the liquidity is the same the maturity is the same so this 0.5 percent is explained by credit risk what about this extra yield of 0.6 percent this extra yield is explained by both credit risk and also option risk now what's the credit risk credit risk based on the similar bond a is equal to 0.5 percent so what's the option risk the option risk is 0.1 percent when we talk about the option adjusted spread for b we are saying what is the spread of b over the treasury bond when we remove the impact of the option or the callable option so if we remove the impact of the callable option then the spread is only 0.5 percent and this 0.5 percent is called the option adjusted spread for bond b for bond a which does not have an option the spread of 0.5 percent is the same as option adjusted spread so there are no options so there is no adjustment so effectively the option adjusted spread is same as a regular spread now we'll talk about the third element which impacts spread and that element is liquidity as you might imagine less liquid issues have greater required yields and greater yield spreads relative to treasuries so the point here is as follows again we'll continue with our five-year bond and let's say that the five-year treasury bond has a yield of 2.5 percent now you have a company that let's say let's say we have company a and company b and company a has a bond that has a yield of three percent and company b has the same credit rating but the problem with company b's bond is that it uh, it is not as liquid and for simplicity we'll assume that both a and b are option free so with company A, the liquidity is great. So liquidity is like the liquidity of your treasury security. And in general, at least in the US, treasury securities are considered very liquid. So this difference, the, the spread between A and treasury is 0.5%, which in our example is purely explained by credit risk. But for this, this issue from, uh, so company B's bond, which has a yield of 3.2 percent if the credit rating is exactly the same as a then we can say that a spread of 0.5 percent is explained through credit risk and that additional spread of 0.2 percent can be explained by liquidity risk so because the issue from company b is less liquid investors are demanding a higher yield or higher return and that extra return that can be attributed to the lack of liquidity is 0.2 percent so the total yield or the total spread of 0.7 percent is explained mostly by credit risk which is the 0.5 percent and also by liquidity risk which is the 0.2 percent so the core point is that less liquid issues here b have a greater required yield and hence greater yield spread relative to treasuries from an exam perspective just uh, another uh, another point is that generally larger issues or larger issues typically have more liquidity and therefore lower yields and lower yield spreads than otherwise smaller issues so if you have a large company like GE that makes uh, that has a huge issue of corporate bonds then generally liquidity will be good and the spread will be lower now as opposed to GE let's say there is a small company called ABC which also has a good credit rating but if the issue of bonds from ABC is relatively small that would mean that the liquidity of this 
issue would be relatively lower. So even though the credit risk is the same, but the yield on these bonds would be slightly higher. So that is again illustrated in the example up here. It is important to understand the concept of after tax and tax equivalent yields, especially if you are investing in municipal bonds. And if you recall from an earlier reading, with municipal bonds typically there is no tax on the interest income. So let's say that you are in the 30% tax bracket and you have an option between two bonds. One is a regular bond that is giving you a 6% return versus a, a muni which is giving you a 5% return. So does this mean that your regular bond which is taxable is giving you a better return and the answer is no because you need to look at your return on a after tax basis. So what's the after tax return on this bond that's giving you 6%? The after tax return is equal to the return on your taxable bond which is 6% into 1 minus your marginal tax rate which we are assuming is 30%. So 6% into 0 0.7 which is equal to 4.2%. So here clearly the municipal bond which is giving you a 5% return is better than the taxable bond given your tax bracket. On the other hand if you are in a very low tax bracket, so let's say for some reason you are just in the 5% tax bracket then it would actually make more sense to invest in the taxable bond. The same calculation can be done in reverse where if you have a tax free yield, so let's say your tax free yield is 5%, then what is the equivalent uh, or the taxable equivalent yield? All you do is divide 5% by 1 minus the marginal rate. So 5% divided by 0.7%. So you can get actually 5% divided by 0.7. So you get this number. So this is saying that with a tax free yield of 5%, what is the equivalent? So, so based on this, you are calculating your tax equivalent yield, which is 7.14%. So notice that the 7.14% is better than 6%. So again, this also shows that it is better to invest in the tax-free municipal bond if you are in the 30% tax bracket. Now finally, let's talk about LIBOR and funded investors. So funded investors are investors who are basically borrowing money to make investments in fixed income securities and obviously funded investors are interested in the relative value of securities using borrowing rates rather than treasury rates. So if the treasury rate is 2.5% but a funded investor is borrowing at 2.8% then clearly the rate that the funded investor is more interested in is this 2.8% and he will look at spreads typically relative to this 2.8%. So related to this is the fact that the most popular reference rate is LIBOR. This is the London interbank offer rate and it is essentially the interest rates that banks pay to borrow from other banks in the London interbank market. So a very important, uh, very important benchmark. And in very simple terms, if we, if you see that, say the six month LIBOR is equal to 2%. All this means is that if you borrow in this interbank market for a six month period, the rate that you are paying is 2%. So if an investor is borrowing at LIBOR and borrowing for six months to make another investment where the investment is giving him a return of 2.2%, then the spread that he would be interested in is the 2.2% minus the 2% which is 0.2%. So that is it. As always, practice hard. Please post your comments on YouTube if you have any. And if you liked this video, please click on the like button.